Okay, so in order to listen to events and react to them, you first have to listen for them, right? Contracts don't just magically like find out about stuff. They're not always listening. You have to specifically tell your contract, hey, let's listen for some stuff. It's called the data stream. All right, so more of my copy and paste magic now. Right underneath in the public section here of the contract, right underneath where it says using contract, contract. On the very next line under it, we're just going to put this line here. And remember, I'll have links to all this code underneath the video or wherever I link to it. I don't know. I'll have all these resources for you so you can copy and paste just like me, like a professional. So this line is basically just a function that says listen for some data, right? You're going to put the name of your contract in the beginning. So that would be code tutorial for me. It has to be the same name as up here where you put in the class. So class is code tutorial, code tutorial, and then again, code tutorial. All, right, all three of these names need to match. Okay, so once you have the names matching like they're supposed to, you really don't need to go crazy worrying about, you know, what this stuff is inside of here. Basically, you're just saying we're streaming some data. We're going to be listening to some contracts and you know we want to know who's like receiving the transactions what contracts are being executed uh so that's what all this stuff is you really don't need to go too crazy like worrying about the syntax of each and every variable in there uh, just know that in order for you to listen for stuff you have to create a data stream and you do that by adding this line to your contract but that's not it now you have to actually create an action just like this one right here where it says Yaseo action, that add message action that we created. We have to create a new thing, except instead of just action, it's going to be called on notify, right? And how do you do an on notify? Well, obviously it's with copy and paste, just like everything else in the contracts. So you're just going to copy and paste this Yaseo on notify right here. So you're basically saying within the Yaseo namespace, I want to do an on notify function which is basically, you know, listening to something, getting notified about it. We'll get more into that in a second. Um, and we'll say EASIO.token transfer. What does this mean inside here? What did we just put? All right. Inside here is what contract and action that you want to listen to. So in this particular example, we're gonna we're just gonna do, for example, a wax token transfer. But you can put anything here. You can listen to a different contract. It could be atomic assets transfer. It could be one of your own contracts that you're listening to. Or you could actually put a star here. And you can say, I want to listen to a transfer from any contract. Uh, but we'll get more into that in a bit. For now, we're just going to do ESIO.token transfer to keep it simple. Um, and on notification of this, I should actually put this on the next line to make it a little easier to read. We are going to run this function called we got paid. And it's not returning anything. It's a void. It's not giving us back a value. And it takes in from to a quantity and a memo, right? Because that's what an EOSIO dot tr token transfer has. If we go to blocks and we look at the EOS io.token contract if we go to the actions here and we go to transfer it has from to quantity and memo so if we're going to be listening to a transfer on the eosio.token contract well we need to make sure that we're looking for the same variables that go into this so we define it the same way we're listening to from to quantity and memo does that make sense so all right now we're listening to this and now we can do stuff when it happens, but you know, what do we actually do? Are there any checks we need to run? And also like, can we just listen to anything that we want? How does that work? Well, let's get into that now. Uh, first, let's cover that last question. Can we listen to anything we want? The answer to that is no, not at all. You can't, you can't just magically listen to anything that happens on the blockchain. It doesn't work that way. If you've ever used Atomic Assets, for example, or Atomic Hub, I should say, and you've created NFTs, you have your own NFT collection. Well, if you go to the settings for your NFT collection, you ever notice how there's this, um, there's the authorized accounts. So you can authorize a specific account to, to do things with your collection, you know, to mint assets or send assets. 
that's authorized accounts. That's that's a different thing. But there's also another section in there called notify accounts. Uh, you maybe have seen that before, and you're kind of like, what is that for? What does that do? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It notifies accounts. So this is going to be defined within individual contracts. I know that sounds a bit confusing, but for example, with Atomic Assets, they ask you to specify some notify accounts. So let's say in your Atomic Hub NFT collection, you put code tutorial as a notify account. Well, Atomic Assets doesn't necessarily have to do anything with that information, but the way that their contract works is they're going to say, oh, okay, Joe, John Smith here wants to notify code tutorial when when anything happens within John Smith's collection. So let's say someone mints an asset in your collection. Atomic Assets is going to look through their contract. It's going to say, who do I need to notify about this? Oh, I see code tutorials in that table because John Smith added them. Let me notify code tutorial. So now code tutorial just happens to have a contract that's listening for this notification. So I'm going to actually get notified about this because you told Atomic Assets to tell me, right? But I couldn't just listen to any collection without their permission. It doesn't work that way. It has to be specified in the contract that's doing the transaction. And this is done through a function called require recipient, by the way. So if you ever want to notify somebody about an action within your contract, you put require recipient. And then you just put, you know, whoever you want to notify here. So let's say you wanted to notify code tutorial about some transaction. You just put require recipient code tutorial underscore N. And that would be your contract saying, all right, whenever this thing happens, for example, in the add message action here, you require authorization of the user. You could also put require recipient. And what this would do is send a notification to whatever put whatever you put in this brackets right so let's say they have a contract that's listening for this they can actually get notified about it um, that's how that works but anyway so within atomic assets for example or yasayoda token they have this line of code that says require recipient and for token transfers for yasayoda token and you know most wax tokens it's going to require the recipient of the sender and the receiver so if I'm the receiver of a token transfer, I'm just automatically going to get notified unless the contract has been changed somehow. So I can be pretty confident that if someone transfers some EOS IOTA token, some wax at EOS IOTA token to my contract, I can be pretty confident that I'm going to get notified about it. So all I have to do is listen for that notification. Now that I'm listening, if that actually happens and the tokens come to my account well then what then what do we do well first of all there's there's something that we definitely want to cover before we move forward and this is a very very basic extremely basic security measure that i think a lot a lot of people don't even know about which is bad uh it's bad that people are deploying contracts and not understanding how this works but we can say let's create a variable here so called const um original I like to use some capital letters sometimes for my original contract equals and we're going to add this function right now called get or call this function I should say get first receiver. What is this? What does this mean? Well, it's what it sounds like. It's the first receiver of the contract, right? So in this case, it it's guaranteed to be token, right? Well, not necessarily guaranteed but it should be. That's what we're expecting. We want to make sure that the original contract is EOS IOTA token because we want to make sure that we're actually getting paid right now and someone's not trying to hack our contract. Because you know how a second ago I told you that you can do require recipient and that would notify somebody about an action? Well, here's a way, and this is something that people try all the time, a way that basically you can get hacked or, you know, hack somebody else who has a poorly written contract if, if you don't know what you're doing or they don't know what they're doing. What you can do 
or what some people do is they have what's called like a helper contract in the middle. So, for example, let's say that you have an account called main account. And from main account, you send some wax at a Yasayoda token contract. You send it to hack contract, you know, your, your secret hacker contract that hacks people. So you send tokens from main account to hack contract, and that's an EOSIOTA token transfer. Well, our contract wouldn't get notified about that, right? Because that's not getting sent to us, so we don't have to worry about that. We're safe. We're not going to find out about that. Well, no, that's not true, actually, because that hack contract account, they can have this line in here that says require recipient, code tutorial and now all of a sudden we're getting notified about this transfer that happened EOS IOTA token transfer happened notify happened because we got notified about it and in that second contract the hack contract they can put false data they can put from somebody to code tutorial even though they're not actually sending you tokens they can put to code tutorial. So now you're getting notified about an EOSIOTA token transfer. And it's coming in your eyes because you don't know any better. It's going to your contract. That's what it tells you, right? So now let's say you're reacting to this by like, you know, someone sends you tokens and now you want to transfer something back. So you go and transfer tokens back to someone thinking that you got paid when you didn't. Now you just lost everything. And God forbid you have other people's money in your contract as well. That's even worse. So how do you get around a thing like this? Well, that's where get first receiver comes in. Because you say, all right, original contract. I have to put, oh, const name original contract or EOSIO name. Original contract equals get first receiver. All right, so now... All I have to do is, let's say I define another variable called like const yasio name real contract equals yasio dot token. All right, so the real contract is yasio dot token, and now all we have to do to make sure we're not getting hacked, we def we say original contract is get first receiver, and now we just compare the two. So we just do check. Remember we did this before, we check for a condition. So we'll say check real contract is equal to original contract. And then we put our error message if this happens to fail, we'll say um, you sent tokens, or how about we just say you trying to get over on us, bro? And that's it. So if someone tried to hack us in that way, it would fail, and now we can actually move forward. That's a very, very important but very basic security check. If you're not doing that, if you have a contract that's handling assets and you're not always checking the first receiver, um, take your contract off the main net and you know, learn how to code before you put other people's money at risk, with all due respect, because um, that's not that's not good to be doing that. You know, you gotta have your security in place if you're gonna be handling people's money. Uh, so next, what would we want to do next? We can say just as an extra check, or maybe for some other reasons, uh, which we'll get into maybe in a bit. We might want to just make sure that we are the receiver and that we're not the sender. All right, yeah. Remember how I just said a minute ago that if you send tokens, you're also going to be notified? Or if you receive tokens, you're going to be notified? Well, okay, this doesn't say receive. This just says transfer. So that means we're going to get notified if we receive tokens or if we, tra or if we send tokens to someone else. And both of those are going to notify our contract. And if we don't also add another little check here, we're going to get errors all the time. Because let's say, let's say there's something else in our contract where uh, 
we're probably going to want to be sending people some wax, right? I mean, that's that's a typical thing that contracts do. If you're receiving wax from people, you're probably going to send people wax. Well, you don't want to be no, you don't want to react to that. Like you only want to react if you receive. You don't want to react if you send. So we can just say if uh, from up here if from equals get self or you do that by putting these two lines here which you should know already because you you've mastered c plus plus already right if from equals get self or two does not equal get self return and that's it that just means if you are the sender or if you're not the receiver if either one of those two things is true then just return just exit out of this just go back to the top pretend nothing happened and then now if we send tokens to someone within our contract and we get notified about it it's not going to throw any errors it's just gonna it's just gonna say forget this this, this is not important right now All right, so now we're ready to actually deal with receiving a transfer and something I like to do all the time if I'm just adding a bunch of lines of code to a contract is just occasionally just build it again, compile it again, just to, to make sure it's working and I didn't make any errors. So if I hit up a few times, I'll just run that same command from earlier, ESIO CPP, just to compile the contract and see if we've got any errors. And it looks like everything's working out. All right, so we're error-free so far.